so I, I know that I know a lot of you don't have this presentation, so we're going to go through this. It's the 5301 ramp management. In 2023, Queen Anne's County and the Maryland State Highway Administration conducted a pilot ramp management project along westbound US 5301 from Castle Marina Road to Maryland 8. SHA collected the traffic data to determine if managing the flow of entering traffic would ease local congestion on Maryland 18 and improve traffic flow westbound 5301 during peak weekend travels. Next slide. So as I said, we, you know, this, this all started in 2018. We had a beach to bridge plan. We met with the state and numerous other uh, agencies, uh, and we just could not get that to work. We can't take control of those ramps. We don't own those ramps, and you cannot, again, you cannot say, you, since you don't live here, you can't go on it. It's just the, the law's different. So why are we closing the, the Route 8 ramp? Again, with that, we can't restrict it to just out-of-towners, beach traffic. It has to be closed for everybody. And what that does when you close that ramp, uh, and so let me, let me tell you, the choke point, and anybody that travels the bridge saw on the western shore, the choke point was right there at the Bay Bridge. People would get on the side street, come in, and what that does is that slows the traffic down, slows it down to a crawl. These, when these bridges were built, those lanes, each lane was rated at 1,500 vehicles an hour. We've never, and we have three lanes, that's 4,500. We've never come close to 4,000, just because that traffic slows down. So what you do is the choke point, by closing Route 8, by closing Duke Street, and by closing the shopping center exit, it allows that traffic, instead of slowing down to let people merge, speed up. So instead of going over the bridge at 10 miles an hour or 12 miles an hour, we're doing 35, and we're getting more vehicles through. And with that, um, you know, that, that alleviates a lot of the traffic. Uh, how many people here are from uh, Queenstown or, or Graysonville or Chester? Yeah, so we got a good bit. We got a good bit. And I th I'm sure they can tell you how long it takes to get to Safeway on, on a Saturday. And, and it's, it's a problem. And it's a problem countywide. So with that, the change in behavior, uh, it's not going to happen over one weekend. It's not going to happen on one weekend where we're going to change these, these traffic patterns and everyone's going to go, okay, this is the new way and, and we're going we're to be able to speed up and not be confused, it's going to take months and, and the, the, to condition, and not to condition our citizens, because we're, we're here now and we, we know what we have to do, but the beach traffic. Navigation software, Waze, Google, they're our enemy. So the, the only way that we can get them to say, to tell people, that, for instance, the backup, about 80% of our backups go all the way to Castle Marina. Then you get about another 15% that get you to, to the Kent Narrows, and then we have those July 4th, the big ones, the back up 16 miles an hour, those kind of things. But with that, Waze will tell you, jump onto 18. By closing the, these exit ramps, they are notified that they're closed. They don't give that option. The traffic stays out on Route 50. And that's why, we, that's why we're back here again today doing this, because we want to see, last year, it was, you're right, it was late after the season. We had an accident on the bridge. Traffic was moving perfectly until we had an accident on the bridge, and that's going to happen. We don't control that, but we hope it doesn't happen that much. So that's one of the reasons for closing them, because so now Waze and, and Google and the rest of them know that it's closed. They keep people on to Route 50. Uh, the no left turn, it, it, it uh, remains open. Navigation soft, if it's open, navigation software We'll see that, and they'll throw people out onto Route 18. And that's what we're trying to avert. We're trying to keep 18 open for our two emergency services and our, and our two uh, fire, main firehouses and for our, our citizens. I know that we've gotten a lot of emails where it took 25, 30, 45 minutes the day of the accident to, tra you know, to, tra to traverse that little loop around. But I can tell you every weekend, I can't tell you how many people in Graysonville or Queenstown say it took me an hour to go to Safeway. I gave up. I mean, uh, you know, it's, and that's another thing. We, you know, our job is, is not only is safety, but is that we govern for everybody, not just Southern Kent Island, everybody. Next slide. So the time, this is going to start um, April, no, excuse me, May 19th. May 19th, uh, Kent Island Day is on the 18th. Uh, it was supposed to start then. We said, no, we're not going to have that many people coming to visit and too much confusion, so it starts on the 19th. Jack Broderick's in the back there. He's more than happy with that. 
Um, the dates, again, they start on the 19th, May 19th through Labor Day weekend, Saturdays and Sundays. Holidays, we, we will, Memorial Day and Labor Day, there, it will also be shut for Monday. So Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Uh, so one of, the, one of the important things on the time here, where, where I talked about earlier how we're, we're trying to gather the data and see how we can change things as we go along, what do we learn? So the start time of 12, that's a later start time than the initial pilot program. Right? And, and one of the reasons we're hoping that this is going to help some people who reached out that they have work shifts, they got to get across the bridge on a Saturday. They said, you know, if it started a little bit later, that's going to help them to be able to get to those shifts. And then we figure checkout time, Ocean City, 10 o'clock by the time they get here, it's 12 o'clock and the traffic really is sort of building after that. And looking at the data flow that the state provided us, so how many people actually are using that exit on a Saturday when we weren't doing ramp management. Um, and this was going to provide some relief for those people. So we modified it to have a later start time. And can, can we do an even later start time? M maybe we're going to learn that. Can we end it earlier? Th these, this is the, we're talking about where we're learning as we're going and we're implementing change. We're trying to make this a fluid process. That's one of the things that we learned from the initial pilot study that we can do a later start time and that's going to hopefully alleviate the burden on some people. I, again, I know it doesn't for everybody, but we're trying to, as we go along, where can we keep tweaking the system? I just want to make sure we point that out. Absolutely. You know, and that, 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 that is a very good point um, because as anybody that travels that intersection knows on Saturdays, right around 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, that's when things get really bad in both directions. Sunday it's westbound. Sunday it's westbound and, and, and eastbound isn't is such a, an issue. But, uh, and also our friends at uh, MDTA uh, controlling the bridge, priority goes to the side that has the most traffic. And what that means is if those three lanes uh, can get down to two lanes, but it still has more traffic than the, the two lanes, they're going to get the third lane. So it's not going to be a given that we get that third lane and travel going westbound all the time. It's, that's just not going to be the case. Uh, it'll depend on what the, the, the amount of backup is. And that's something, again, all this we're learning now, and, and we need to put it to play after a good two, three months to see where this goes. Next slide. Yeah. So we talked about the, uh, the timing what time they're going to be open, closed, uh, the dates, and the continue to study. So I will tell you that each and every one of us last year made that loop no less than six or seven times driving it. And I was in it when the accident happened. And I saw the backup, and I totally understand that. And it's unfortunate. And, and we're, we're happy that, not happy, but we're, we are, we have to do something so we're, we're glad that we're here and we're going to do this again and see if it does make a difference. And, you know, I, I'm, I apologize to Southern Canal and it's not something that we're trying to do to make your life miserable at all. We're trying to improve the quality of everybody's life and if it costs you another 10 minutes, you know, we're sorry, but I think that's, it's, it's fair. You know, and a, a good point that Commissioner Wilson just brought up, I don't know how many people know that the 301 bypass has grown exponentially every year since it's opened. I mean, anybody that traveled up 301 towards Delaware would see a car every couple minutes. It's, it's heavy. And we're counting all that traffic. We have counters at the bridge. We have counters at the 5301 split. We have counters at 404. We're, we're monitoring where the traffic's going and where it's coming from. All this plays into this. And now with, uh, you know, unfortunately, the, the, the tragedy at the Key Bridge, we're not seeing too much of that, with the exception of we are seeing an uptick in tractor-trailer traffic. So, and now, you know, this is one of the corridors is a prior, priority for hazardous material. So we have that, you know, going for us also. But uh, everybody's rowing in, in the same direction. I can't say that enough about our, our state uh, agencies. I mean, everybody's working for the same thing and they're going as quickly as they can with this NEPA to get moving forward. So we'll go from there.